Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the baseboard that's in here. Now, a little bit extra for the depth of the cabinet, so it's going to be about 24 and 3 eighths of an inch out from the wall corner out on both sides and in the back also. All right, so we'll go 24 and 3 eighths. So I can put one cabinet in this area here and then this one here I'm going to have to lift up above, push it in. Realized that the flooring was put in and it has a gap of about that big. I'm just going to go here. method. In order to drill these though, you got to make sure you drill a little bit down, keep the drill going, and then as you're pivoting it, you keep the drill going. Always, otherwise you'll break the drill bit. So it's a little tough to do these. So I'm going to connect these nice and tight. that 
area in the corner we're going to do cleats since we're not putting the cabinet back there. Just <laughs> Like I said, it's going to be real tight. We're going to want to come in and basically just lift it up. Hopefully we can get it through this area here. <laughs> Alright, we got this thing in. Kind of. What a pain in the ass to go through this doorway. Absolute pain in the ass. But the reason we couldn't put it in at an angle was because the extra depth of this cabinet kept us from doing that. So we had to slide it in like that. And definitely not so easy. You can see the cleats doing their job. Let's take some measurements here and just make sure we're square to this cabinet. It's going to be counter that's going to be covering this whole thing. There's going to be a rough top. And then there's going to be a slab. Okay, so we got the pocket screws attaching it to the floor. Both sides, so that's rock solid. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this guy up. Get that nice and flush. And that's glued, so that'll look good. And then we got base to put on around this front, and then base to put on there at the front, not inside. So I know the doors go to approximately those lines instead of um, measuring up. I'm just going to take my uh, square and set it down to where I want the baseboard to go to. And it's going to be about a quarter inch space between the baseboard and the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the height of the baseboard and make sure that height is going to work. Um, I want that baseboard to be touching here because there's not going to be anything covering the sides of it. Uh, I can't run it in there because there's no room because of the refrigerator. So I'm just going to let that one uh, end with the butt joint and the 45 for the shoe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set this um, square on here. And I'm marking where the top of the base is going to go. This makes it really nice when you're going to put it in. Now, for the um, baseboard here, it's going to be a little bit higher, but that's okay because my shoe mold is going to cover it. So that's great, that's what we want. Now what I need to do is cut out for the baseboard and the shoe molding is gonna be coped into this area here. So we're gonna to have to do that obviously separate. Uh, 
go to the other one. Now to do the measurements, what I'm gonna do, because I've got an inside measurement here, I'm gonna take a measurement and I'm actually gonna do the, the two-step process where I just go to an even number, which is 20 in this case. 20. And now what I can do is come over to the other side, take a measurement. 26 and a half. So 26 and a half and 20 equals 46 and a half. All right, we're going to start with the crown mold in. And it's just a one piece single crown. It's very similar to what they have in their kitchen. Center support here. It's definitely not the glue there for sure. So this is where this um, I had to take off these hinges because I have to go above the area and <laughs> shoe molding where it goes right there is going to have to be coped um, there to all these areas here as well. Now this piece here, this little one, is just a little too short. Yeah, that's one of those things you just, sometimes it happens. So what I need to do is recut this one. That guy right there needs to be flush. This piece here, I, need, I was debating on whether or not I wanted to do that uh, because it's gonna be completely covered by the um, refrigerator, but I think I'm actually gonna do that. I think it will look better and uh, I think the customer will like it. I tested the refrigerator. And, it goes back far enough, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But this looks really good. It's nice and flush. I'm going to go ahead and glue this guy up. So when I did this, I didn't ease this edge because I knew this was going to be flat and I wanted that to be nice and tight. So what I'm going to do now is ease this edge and also this one and then ease that inside edge as well. <laughs> So you see me coat before uh, the shoe molding and I just wanted to do this again since I have to do it on this job again and it's the same molding. Um, this is going to be a sample piece just to show you it's got a split in it so it's actually kind of nasty. Um, actually I'll do it on this side. Now when you put this in you don't want to put it in like this you would think oh I'm going to cope it. 
So I want to have it be like that, but that's not the way you want it. You actually want to go under this part. So you want to remove all of this material. So you actually want to lay it down flat on its back, not the bottom. So lay it on its back. And as you go into the wood, you want to just kind of rock it just to even out the wear on the sandpaper. This is oscillating, so it helps, but still do that. This is pine, so it takes up quite a bit of a stitch. When we get to the end, kind of refine it. Okay, so now we've basically gotten to this point. And you can see the area that we want to remove. So what I'll do is I'll just put this down flat on the table now, and I'll work a little, little uh, more finer. I have my glasses on that are pretty good, so I can see pretty good. towards the top is going to be really fragile, so be careful. And as I get to the top, I'm, on, I'm just lifting it up so I can double that back edge. And when you bevel the back edge, you're basically um, back cutting it. So I'm removing this material. So now let's see, we can take one of the pieces that we're ultimately going to cope and we'll see how that fits. We want the, the goal is for it to just fit right over without any, you know, problems. And you want to be able to push pretty firmly. So you can see that fits pretty good right there. Like, I mean, that doesn't get much better than that. That's nasty, right? Look at that thing. You can't get that with any other method, in my mind. So, you take this piece and we practiced on and just kind of see what that looks like when you actually go to put it in the, the house. You want that to be nice and tight. Look at that. That is beautiful. So be careful with that because it's super sharp. Oh, that fits right there, man. Look at that. Oh, that's so nice. I mean, it doesn't even get... It's hard to explain, but that's so good. back here and this is going to be the, the kicker will this be where it needs to be or does it need to be I'm going to put a little glue on this bottom edge here so it doesn't kick off shit because of the angle but you just never know So that looks really good. 
So that's the the outside miter there. You want that? I mean, it just doesn't even look like a miter. It just looks like a big piece of wood. Flush on this side. Everything's flush, so that's really great. And that one there. So I went with the 45 degree angle on the um, on the shoe molding there. Um, so this is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning up. I got my work cut out for me. Okay, so we got this all done, and it looks really good. You can see up there, the crown molding. It's just what they have in their kitchen, so it's gonna be great for this room. And then this, of course, is gonna have a sub top, a rough top that's gonna be covering up this whole thing. And then there's gonna be a, a, a granite slab that's gonna go above it. So the doors are gonna be coming down to here. You can see that. And the slab will be about right there. So the eighth inch or quarter inch gap. But the um, copes turned out really good. This area here is always a, uh, you know, you want to make sure that uh, you get nice tight um, copes and everything looks good. You want these to be flush here. And then this obviously not to be flush because once they paint everything, it's going to look nice and clean. Same thing here, really strong joint there. Looks really good. Come across here. Now, that guy right there looks really nice. Yeah. And here too, it's going to paint. Because it, otherwise it could be slightly different. And they'll cut right here. But that, um, you know, that looks really good. Nice. And so, these are the joints where you, uh, so this is the added joint when we got here. Same thing up there. You can't tell the difference between the one we did in the shop and the one we did here. They just, you can't see the difference. And that's the, that one there we did here. And of course, the bottom one we did here, you can't tell. It just looks like one continuous face frame rather than having a joint up the middle where you put two cabinets together. This is just so much better. It just looks so much better. Okay. So, got all the hinges back on, and we are finished. Very nice. So the shelves are going in after the painters are done, because it's just gonna get in their way. The outlet looks nice and clean in there. Yeah. So, broom storage, and then everything else. So that's how this is. Refrigerator, um, that looks really clean. That V groove is gonna look nice there too. Um, this all turned out really good. The granite guy is coming in. He's gonna be putting a rough top here, uh, and then also a obviously the slab. So once that's done, that'll look even better. But right now everything's down to paint. You see how nice the paint looks. I mean, it's just really classy, really good looking. Everything looks real good. The baseboard looks great. See, this is why I use the one inch baseboard to give it um, some definition. If you use three quarter inch baseboard, you, you lose the, you lose the uh, thickness because of the door above it, the hinges, you know how they stick out? You, you're, you're gonna lose the three quarter thickness here. So I do the inch baseboard and it looks so much better as you go around here, you see that that definition there you know just something I like to do whenever my jobs get painted by my painters I know the job's going to be really good and this is no exception this looks really nice so the doors are flawless I mean this is just like glass the profile just smooth as glass MDF, you just, it's all about high paint it and mill it, but that looks really good. Just really, really nice. 
So let's double check that this is going to fit. And that looks good. To cover the holes that you are not using. I don't want to drill the wrong hole. This one here. Check this, I mean, just triple check. So now, this is where the jig really shines, right? Because you've got, you've got it set up and all you have to do is go to the ones following and just keep going. You can see the issue I'm going to have on this other one. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Isn't that funny? Now, since these are partially done, now what I do is I take my block and I go around and I hit all these guys with my block back end up. So you can see why I do this in two steps, just to have more control and to be able to use my blocker. The backer block. I do that one not quite so tight. Make sure this is straight. Inevitably, these knobs and handles, sometimes they don't go perfectly straight. And all these reveals and stuff, I didn't touch that since the shop, so those are still the same reveals. Everything looks good. The, the um, uh, what's it called? What's it called? The uh, um, painters. Yeah, that's a good job. So in here, there's no dividers there, so there's just big, um, big shelves in there. And of course, it takes up a lot of room, huh? This one, these are separate. That's a too big of a cabinet to do. So those guys are separate, so that's nice. And this is nice. So these are extra deep too. So these are 17 or 16 inches deep, um, which has made it difficult to put it in. Look at the painters cocked. They cocked to the cabinet there. It's funny. Um, that looks real clean there. This interior is so nice. I mean, of course the Nice. So I, I put a shelf in here. I don't, they're not using it. Um, that's the only section that doesn't have a shelf because it's so small. But this one in here, I put a shelf. I figured they might be able to utilize it. So you can see there's actually holes there. And those, um, for whatever, they go all the way down to the bottom. Um, maybe down the road they might want to use, use it there. and big. And then, of course, you got the end panel. That looks good. And the way I mounted this thing, this is really solid. Very nice. About six months since we finished this job, but I haven't been able to get by to take a look at the counters. So when you're doing this kind of stuff, you're always left with that, um, the question, how are you going to attach this to the floor? Because there's nothing here, right? There's no support. So up here there's support, but there's nothing here. And so what I do is connect it to the floor in several ways. And of course on the video, you can see that. But I always want to make sure this is rock solid and not going to move. But um, this looks really good. 
counters look excellent and uh, everything just came out really nice. You can see, I mean, the, the um, finish is phenomenal. So whenever you have a good finish on things, it really does help things stay nice, you know, longer. So this looks really good. But you can see here, the guys did a really good job putting the counters in. And of course you've got the, the big pantry doors there and the joinery where these cabinets get put together. It's so seamless. So you can see, and you remember me building these. The goal for me is to have these cabinets look in a way when it's all done where you can't tell how they're put together. And that's the goal. So these things, I can't tell where the joint is. Completely invisible. Yeah, I can't see. There's just nothing there. So that just goes to show you, if you're trying to achieve this type of a look, where you've got these, you know, each one of these is um, about 40 inches or so. And then they're put, put together right there, but I didn't want that big seam going down the middle. So that's why I do it the way that I do it. You can't see any seam. So that looks very good. Okay. All right. 